All right, guys, so we are going to talk about uh, frequency separation and some of the things that we can actually do with this, um, some of the ways that you might have heard about or some of the ways you haven't heard about. Um, and I'm going to explain this in a visual way uh, to hopefully give us a deeper understanding of kind of what this actually is doing. So if I just get to it here, uh, essentially, we're going to imagine our image uh, as a curve. So if we imagine our image as a frequency, uh, we have this broad kind of curve, and then we have these spikes on, on top of that curve. And with each of these spikes, uh, essentially each one of these is uh, a point of contrast. So uh, these would be kind of texture detail that's kind of appearing if we're imagining our, our image as a, a curve. So if we want to look at an image uh, and see what that means, you know, some of these cross sections of this uh, kind of ground panel here, that would be kind of high frequency detail. Uh, or maybe some of these lines, uh, you know, so these tiny points of contrast, um, stuff like this would be high frequency detail in an image. So if we go back uh, and we take our image, so we take our original image and we blur it. And if we just do that, uh, that's what that's going to look like on a curve. So we're averaging the, the values along this curve or image uh, and getting something like this. So this is achieved by just blurring a picture. Uh, and that's going to maintain the kind of profile of the curve, but it's getting rid of those uh, points of contrast. So essentially what we can actually do with this, uh, if we go here, is if we divide those two, we take the original image divided by this newly blurred image, we're going to get just the high frequency detail. So we're going to essentially what we're doing is we're separating uh, the lighting which is the blurred image from the high frequency texture. So if we take a look at what that is, we have our original image here. And if we blur that just a little bit and we divide it, we can see that this divided result has small, uh, basically all the small details isolated. Uh, and if we adjust that blur, we can adjust the size of the detail that we're targeting. So for example, if we want to target small details like this, uh, we can do that by adjusting our blur size. So now that we have our uh, basically uh, low image, uh, low frequency and high frequency separated, we can make adjustments to these layers independently. So we can make adjustments to the texture and the uh, overall broad lighting uh, without affecting one another. So for example, if there's a high frequency detail, that we want to remove without affecting the broad lighting, we can just paint that out and uh, affect that curve. And once we've affected that curve, we can multiply these back together and we'll get uh, a final image with that uh, second spike there removed. So it's just a divide and a multiply. Uh, you can also use a minus and a plus, but uh, divide and multiply works pretty well. So if we want to see this in action, uh, it's very simple. So we have our image, we blurred off to the left here and then we divide it and we separate this into two columns. So we have our low frequency, which is our lighting and our high frequency, which is our texture. So if we want to go to our texture layer uh, and see how this could be actual pra actually practical, uh, if we want to remove, if we want to copy something like this high frequency detail that's on this guy's face and put it in a brighter area, uh, if we did that with a normal roto paint, and I'll show you. So if we just plug that in, take our clone stamp and we'll just clone stamp this onto his cheek. Uh, we see that we get um, essentially, you know, that whole darkness area. It's just copying the picture. Um, but if we do it in the in the detail layer, our texture, uh, high frequency detail, and I put a roto paint on this layer before it's multiplied back together. So we'll go here, take that same area and we'll just paint that on, onto uh, the cheek region. You see, we get a very different result. So if we compare the two, this is copying the picture and this is copying just the detail. And of course, we can go back to our blur layer, uh, blur node and adjust that if we need to adjust the, the amount of detail coming through. So we can see that's adjusting the amount. If we go too far, we see that, okay, some of the lighting starts to come through. So you gotta keep that blur not too big. So essentially, you know, with the blur, you kind of want to blur it. Um, if you're looking at your divide, uh, you want to blur it to, you know, where you just start to see uh, that area without too much lighting in it. 
So like for example, if we wanted to remove the seam on this shirt, this would be another example. Uh, I'll delete this. Uh, <clears throat> I'll do a roto paint note in the texture layer. And I'll just kind of start to paint this out. And we'll go here, paint down the seam in just the texture layer. So that's going to keep the broad uh, lighting without affecting. Sorry, that's going to keep the uh, yeah broad lighting kind of the same without uh, with with just changing the texture detail. So if we affect this blur, we see if it's not blurred enough, it's not working. Uh, but if we blur it just the right amount, uh, it's going to work. But if we blur it too far, we see that it's kind of grabbing uh, places from the other part of the picture. So there is a, a level there that you need to kind of find depending on what area you're working on on a picture. So this is great for um, obviously photo retouching. Uh, you can paint out wrinkles. You can add wrinkles if you want uh, and all kinds of stuff. And uh, that's pretty useful. But there's other ways to use this that I think people might not be aware of or they haven't thought of. Uh, so if we go up to a picture like this, uh, something we want to do, maybe we want to take this sign and put some of these uh, symbols on a different colored sign. Uh, and that would be kind of tricky if you were just doing roto paint. You could take a roto paint here, and <clears throat> you could obviously just paste them on. But that's not what we want to do. So what we could do is go to our blur here, and I'm going to blur this image until I just see lighting. So until I see these details disappear, uh, and the details on this side. So once I see those details gone, but I see the overall color, that's kind of the level that is good for the blur. We'll divide it so we get to our texture, and then we'll just take a roto paint node on our texture layer and just copy those symbols uh, onto the lower sign. Make sure I'm viewing it onto the lower sign like this. And now, if you look at the final result and compare it, we see that one has all the, the it's just copying the picture, and one is actually absorbing the color. Uh, from that sign, which is a pretty amazing technique. And you can use this in all kinds of scenarios. You know, so for example, if this area has too much detail, you could take an area with no detail and start to paint it in. And you see it's not working here because our blur. So maybe different areas need different amount of blur. Um, so that's something you have to keep in mind, the level of uh, blur and, you know, texture detail is relative to the area that you're working on. Um, so Another example, yeah, you could even do it down here. So if you wanted to say, I want to grab some detail from back here, but keep the broad lighting of this area. So you could blur it to that level, go to a roto paint node, and just clone stamp in here. And you'll see that we're getting that greenish effect, but we're getting that texture detail from up here. Uh, another and a way to use this, uh, and the way I'm using it in uh, this comp, so let's go here. Uh, I've talked about glossiness before in my other videos. Um, so the way we would use it in this comp would be uh, to pull out texture detail and actually use that as a glossy reflection uh, on the surface of this material. So what we can do is uh, take that original image and just to give it a second to load here. So we take this original image and we mirror it to get, let's see, here we are. So we mirror this image and we blur it. So we're gonna create a kind of a reflection. Uh, and, and basically we're gonna uh, also do this dividing technique. So this is the texture uh, detail that we're dividing out. So we have the blur, the original image and the divide. So now we have the high frequency separation. And now we can just use this as a mat. Um, so this is actually an interesting mat we can use that a luminance keyer is not gonna give us this type of mat. So this is why this technique is gonna work. So we can mask this uh, high frequency detail by the reflection. And now using this, we can essentially add uh, different areas of glossy reflections on surfaces that would otherwise be hard to key because they're not uh, brighter or darker. They're just uh, small details. So that's how we're adding some high frequency kind of glossy reflections uh, on some of this surface. And essentially, again, we're always trying to think about glossiness and uh, specular, specularity. 
Um, so, you know, if we're thinking about high frequency surfaces, it's easy to do with, you know, a radial noise like this. Um, but if we're doing it uh, on an image, uh, we need we need a way to kind of extract that uh, texture detail out. And that's how we can use that frequency separation to essentially get uh, a result uh, that we can have more flexibility over. So that's a couple ways we can use uh, this frequency separation technique to sort of uh, do different things. So thanks so much.